In this video, I will be showing you step by step how to make a platformer game in Scratch. In this episode, we will start by coding basic wall, floor, and ceiling collisions and some simple movement controls. Create a blank project and let's begin. We'll start by painting a new sprite and drawing a floor. We can delete this variable here that generates by default in new scratch projects. Now we will make five new variables, all of them for this sprite only. X, Y, YV or Y velocity, XV or X velocity, and solid. When green flag clicked, set X to zero, set Y to zero, set XV to zero, and set YV to zero. One of the most important parts of coding a platformer is knowing whether the player has collided with the level. Create a new custom block called check solid with run without screen refresh checked. Set X position to X variable and Y position to Y variable. Grab an if then else block and check whether we are touching sprite 2, which is our level. If we are, set the variable solid to 1, if else, set solid to 0. It's time now to code some gravity into our platformer. Create a new custom block, calling it change y by, followed by a number input labeled y. Check the box Run Without Screen Refresh and click OK. Change the Y variable by the Y input in our custom block and check Solid. If Solid is greater than 0, set the variable YV to 0. Then, repeat ceiling of absolute of the Y input. Check if solid is greater than 0, and if it is, change the y variable by 0 minus y input divided by absolute of y input. and check solid again. If solid is zero, stop this script. Now that that's done, let's get our player to fall to the ground. Under our when green flag clicked, place a forever loop, and inside it, change yv by minus one, and change y by yv with our custom block. As you can see, the cat now has gravity. If we set the variable yv to a positive number, for example 12, we can even make the player jump at this early stage. Click the block and the cat hops. Ceiling collisions are also taken care of.
now we need to be able to move horizontally. Create a new custom block, this time called change x by, and place a number input called x. Run without screen refresh and hit OK. Duplicate everything underneath our change y custom block and remove all references to the input y and replace them with the input x. Replace the variable y with the variable x and yv with xv. Let's add some controls so that we can move Scratch Cat around. Grab an if then else block, an if then block, and two or blocks. If key right arrow or key D press, if else key left arrow or key A pressed, change variable xv by 4 and change xv by minus 4. Then use our change x custom block to change x by xv. After that, set xv to xv times 0.7. Place this code in our forever loop above the change y custom block and click the flag. We can now walk around left and right. Let's add some walls to test our wall collision script. Perfect. We stop moving as soon as we touch a wall. Let's add in some proper jumping. Create a new variable called in air. If key up arrow pressed or key W pressed, set YV to 11. Click the green flag and now we can jump. However, we can jump no matter where we are, even if we are not touching the ground. Essentially, we can fly. This is where the variable in air comes in. After checking for up key presses, change in air by 1. Before setting yv to 11, check whether in air is less than 4. If it is, set yv to 11 and jump. In our change y custom block, after colliding with a solid surface, check to see whether y is greater than zero. If it is not, set in air to zero. This ensures that in air is set to zero when we are on the ground, and changes by one when we are in the air. 
If it is less than 4, we may jump. Click the flag to test the game again. We can now only jump when we are standing on the ground. The level is feeling very small right now, so I will set the player's size to 50%. That's better. You may notice another problem with this platformer engine. Currently, we can hang onto walls by our whiskers and by the tip of our tail. This looks terrible, so let's fix it by adding a hitbox to the player. Duplicate the player's main costume and group the contents. Create a black box over the player, covering the parts that you wish to have solid collisions. Delete the player behind the box. Now we are a scratch cat sized hitbox, but this also looks terrible. Luckily, we're not done yet. Name the costumes Hitbox and Player for organization. At the top of our forever loop, before anything else happens, switch costume to Hitbox. At the end of the loop, switch costume to Player. This way, all of the collisions will be detected while we are box-shaped, but we will still look like a cat. As you can see, we no longer hang onto walls by our whiskers. We seem to be behind the level though, so let's drop in a go-to-front layer block. As a final visual touch, let's make it so that we always face the direction we are moving. At the top of our script, outside of the forever loop, add a set rotation style to left-right block. When we move right, point in direction 90, and when we move left, point in direction minus 90. Now we face the direction we are moving. Now, that's all for today. We've created the beginnings of a very promising platformer game here, and if you would like to see this series continued, please subscribe to the channel and tell me in the comments what features you would like to see added in later episodes. Thank you for watching.